Only on five, the city of Santa Cruz reveals its plan to take on raging storms, floods, and erosion. But as KPX 5's Devin Feely reports, water could win the fight. It's the allure of a life lived at the water's edge. But even on a bright blue cloudless day, there is a storm gathering one threatening communities up and down California's coast. The low-lying areas are subject to flooding. The coastal cliffs are all eroding. The city of Santa Cruz commissioned a study looking at the long-term effects of rising sea levels, coastal erosion, and storm events. The study predicts a relatively modest increase in the next decade, four inches by 2030. But it's the decades that follow that's cause for concern. 28 inches by 2060, and 63 more than five feet by the turn of the next century. Every foot sea level rises, the next storm, the next high tide, the next El Nino are on top of that. The report says it's not clear if the current protection for coastal areas like Westcliff Drive will be able to withstand the threat of rising sea levels. It's called armoring. The big boulders, the sea walls that are used to protect parts of the coast, and the language itself suggests a battle, man versus mother nature. It is often in reality, however, a war of attrition, with the ocean chipping away at the defenses, or during big storms, carving out entire sections of the coast. So what happens to the 63 buildings the study says are threatened right now, or the 275 projected to be vulnerable in 2060? The report raises an unpleasant possibility, writing that given the engineering complexity and the cost, protecting all vulnerable properties may be cost prohibitive, and the city may be forced to consider a strategy of, quote, managed retreat, meaning in the simplest possible terms, the ocean wins and people will have to move. Maybe we can't protect all of them, but we can protect some of them. If we lose ground, I mean, yeah, we're going to have to plan for maybe one lane of West Cliff. And it's not just West Cliff Drive. This map shows neighborhoods east of the boardwalk at risk as well, including Seabright and Twin Lakes. It's unlikely, however, that homeowners will give up without a fight. I think people are, who live here who realize the beauty of this place are really going to do everything they can to rebuild, if possible. How much time does any of the threatened properties have? Impossible to say. But the science is increasingly clear. There is a storm gathering, its strength growing. Now, sea level rise and coastal erosion affects communities throughout the Bay Area, including, of course, San Francisco. Now, we flew Sky Zone 5 along the Embarcadero and the Bay Bridge today, where city leaders were partnering with environmentalists to use virtual reality to demonstrate the potential impacts of rising sea levels on the city's waterfront. The Look Ahead app gives people an immersive view of the potential impacts to three low-lying areas, the Embarcadero, Mission Creek, and Heron's Head. The goal is to promote conservation and encourage people to take whatever steps they can to reduce their impact on the environment. We're already seeing sea level rise now. We're already seeing flooding in this area when you do get high king tide with a storm event. Um, and the future, yes, it's expected it could flood regularly here. Now, the Look Ahead app is available right now on Android and iPhones, and coastal communities are facing some very difficult choices in the next 25 yeah. years. That, that app really brings it to yeah. reality, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Show, showing places that people go to all the time now that may be underwater in a few decades. Yeah. Wow. wow. All right. Devin, Devin thank thanks. you.